Welcome to the Pundit Views the, for the night. And you know something? This is not the Pundit's Pundit, but it's the Pundit Views. It is like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which you already know I like conversation from my show on Wednesdays. But tonight's is a, bit, a little bit different. It's the fact that every once in a while I get to, to bring on some friends of mine. You know, think people that I know, you know, because they have always have an interesting story to tell. This one is a real interesting story, and you're going to enjoy him tonight. He's a he would be a he's a hip hop producer and an artist. It's Fem is King Femi. Come on over here, my man. How's it going? How's, How's it going, it my man? How's it going? Doing great. Glad to be here. Thanks for having good, me. Good, good, awesome. So I wanted to just bring this part up. Bring us a little bit of how you got to the, you know, you, you're, where are you from originally and how'd you get to the United States? I'm originally from Bermuda, the beautiful oh. island, probably the most beautiful place on earth. And I got <laughs> to the States uh, by way of playing football at boarding school. And uh, Oh, you talk, you talking about soccer or football? I'm talking about American football. Oh, okay. And that, that lasted for about two weeks, to be honest. By the time two-week camp was finished, I was just at boarding school. So, I mean, I found a new uh, hobby, which was rapping. But, uh, yeah, I got to I got to the States uh, through Vermont, the state of Vermont, and uh, and boarding school. That must be a good drink. What do you, is that one of your Bermudan drinks? Basically. That's, yeah. we'll, call it, we'll call it that for the night, one of my Bermuda drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you got through for football. What'd you play? What position? I was a uh, running back. They tried to put me a wide receiver first, and then I realized how fast I was. And then they was kind of like, "Well, we don't really need a wide receiver. <laughs> you just give him the ball." Like you know what I mean? The thing was, I used to play rugby, and rugby was like so much more fast paced than yeah. uh, football because you know football stops and rugby doesn't. So, like, the thing was, it was just throwing me off. It just kind of started. But it was, like, my introduction to uh, the entertaining side of it because it wasn't all about hitting each other. It's about playing a sport, like, you know what I mean? And that kind of – yeah, it taught me some lessons. I kind of wish you, I would have kept playing. So, tell me this. You did rugby and you did football. Now, yeah. the thing about this is if you know you've got, like, say, 45 minutes, say, or whatever, that much time and you're just continuously running – is there a technique to be able to keep your breath, to be able to keep yourself from wearing out, or are you just pretty much used to it? Um, yeah, the actual area is uh, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But, but no, so I'm just saying, I mean, I was just saying by itself, is there, I mean, so you're talking about that people usually, you're talking about people are usually holding their breath while they're moving so they run out quick. Well, if you hold your breath, uh, you're, when you get hit, you're going to be out of breath, <laughs> out of breath for the rest of the game. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people do have the wrong uh, techniques, and you know, but well, actually, what I was talking, what I'm talking about is the fact that like the game stops. Like every time somebody hits the ground, the ball hits the ground, they, they blow the whistle. You know, that's football. In rugby, the ball could hit the ground, and whoever gets it first gets it first, mm -hmm. and that's you know, gets the advantage. And then they might get hit trying to pick the ball up. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's, that's, a, that's a very physical, that's actually a pretty violent sport. Like, I see why we don't play it that much. Either. Like, we're serving uh, people. You know I mean? Exactly. And the, the, but that was the big thing is that <laughs> that's the one big thing, Laura, because I always wonder, because I remember I didn't do a mile in, at all until I played tennis in high school for one year. I didn't do a yeah. mile at all. And then you start yeah. realizing, you start wondering just for that second, how do these people get without getting tired? Then you realize you're probably sucking your own wind out by holding your own breath, or just like however you're much. Am I right? That no, that is actually very true. I mean, breath control is everything when it comes to sports. You gotta really like anything physical. Holding your breath is like <laughs> you're being your own worst enemy at that point. Because like honestly, it's like your body, your physical. Even your brain, like everything operates off the oxygen flowing through your body. Like, you know what I mean? And that sounds like common sense, but the but you know, when you get tense and you're in the actual physical situation, like it's easy to lock up and not breathe and whatnot. But like the thing is, the more you breathe, for example, that one second that you didn't like that that moment where you went and you're holding your breath, like you know what I'm saying? That's one second less of air that you could have used to have that much more of an advantage when it came to that physical contact. Yeah, yeah. I back up from the last hit you took or hitting somebody that much harder. Like, you know what I mean? Or especially taking it in the ribs or something. 
<laughs> Taking it in the ribs always sucks. So, I mean, the best way yeah. to do that is to break as well. I, I agree. Oh, no question. So you so you got to football. How long did you play football? Um, I mean, we used to play, like, flag football and stuff back in Bermuda. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. out here, I probably played – for about a semester, bro. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to make it sound like I was some football hero. Like, you know what I mean? I, I kind of was. But as soon as I got the title of a football hero, I was like, you know what? I want to go do something else because <laughs> I'm just playing. But, like, probably for like a month, honestly. Like a month and a half, maybe. But. You yeah, wanted to. Like, so you wanted to play. You wanted to do music. I, I found music. I found music by way of lifestyle. See, the thing about football is you have to go to the football field. You have to consciously practice. Music was like one of those things. We were like in our dorms. We had computer mics just because, you know, we were kids with computers, whatever. And say, like, hey, you can download a beat. We got this free program, Audacity. You know, that's just, you know, and then we just, it's just something you do on the fly between class and like then at the cafeteria. You don't have to like set up shop to do it. Like, you know what I mean? So we just kind of just stumbled across. I had always been kind of rapping to myself, like, you know what I mean? Or just to my friend, you know, at the lunch tables or whatever, with friends or whatnot. But I think really, yeah, we started recording ourselves, like with this group called the Academy Boys. And that was a a guy from Spain, a guy from New Orleans, me, a guy from Bermuda, and a guy from Chicago. And a guy from, where is Nick from? Nick, I can't remember where you're from. I'm sorry, but and this and Nick, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, and, uh, oh, absolutely. And you and when you were rapping, you said that you just started rapping. Were you like rapping other lyrics? Were you just making your own stuff as you came along? Was it coming into your head, or how did you do it? Uh, it was like when I was bad, I would make songs. I remember my first songs to this day. I was ten years old. I would tell you, actually, I might tell you because Jay, I don't know if everybody, if everybody knows this or not, but Jay's the inspiration to me having purple hair. My hair's not purple right now, but everything else is, right? <laughs> he was like, hey, man, colors are about to be in. And I was like, you know what? I took that advice and ran with it. I, I don't know if I can curse on it, but I dyed my hair purple. And, and uh, I, I ran well, all the way I'm, I'm happy to help you, man. We get, we've always... I'm happy to help because we've known each other for about three years now, and I've always enjoyed it, you know, four years. Yes, sir. And uh, I think my first song was like, I was mad at something. I was like ironing my clothes. And I was like 10 years old. I was like, I'm crazy, insane. Like, I just started making some like crazy song in my head. I swear to God, bro. I was like 10 or 11. But then after that, I actually started putting structured, you know, uh, arrangements together. And, you know, but I've been playing music my whole life. I think music was my first, it's like my first love. I've been, playing the piano since I was like three, reading music. I used to play classical music on the violin from like ages eight to 16. Like, you know what I mean? Like sports and all the other stuff was like other stuff that I did. But the thing about it is it takes so much out of you and I'm asthmatic. So it's Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. You get it? Music is just kind of just fell on the wayside because I could do that without losing all the oxygen in my body, you know? And – no, and the, and when it comes to and the thing is now remember I'm not a you've known me for a bit you know I'm not a hip hop guy so when it comes to hip hop how does one get motivated in I mean because there's people that like to sing mm-hmm. there's people that have the um, there's people that have the uh, that do lyrics they have the idea they kind of get the tune would you say okay in your own head would you say it's kind of like poetry for yourself it's like that you're yeah. able to be able, you know spoken word. Yeah, honestly, I would say it's exactly like poetry. I actually started, I don't know about everybody else, but there's two key elements, sister. There's two key elements that I used to use when it came to, like, uh, my introduction to rap. I used to actually write poetry when I was, like, a kid. Like, you know, like, when, when we started learning about poems in school, I would, like, take that information and then do it on, the, like, outside of school. I would write my own poems, like haikus and everything else. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I played the drums. And I also read a lot. So it actually is three things. Reading a lot, poetry, and playing the drums kind of gave me what I needed as like basic fundamentals to rap. But rapping in, rapping in and of itself has some poetic elements. I think it's evolved poetry. Like, you know what I mean? It's evolved poetry with music behind it. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of... Sorry, sorry. It's kind of... 
say it's just poetry is like kind of simplifying it over like, a little too much. Like, you know what I mean? But it has roots in like its roots are in poetry. Put it that way. What like, would you, know, you read? Oh, uh, I would read. I read. Uh, excuse me. I read the second Harry Potter book in like a day. Like one day. I mean, honestly, it was those type of books, like fantastical, like fantasy type of books, uh, textbooks from school. I went to private school, so I had to have read in a bunch of books anyway, right? I mean, unfortunately, that's the truth. I'm, I'm not here to lie to you, fans. I mean, but uh, I also read, once I was old, I read books like 48 Laws of Power, The Art of War, uh, one of my other- favorites. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, was it the Four Agreements? Uh, some personal books that pertain to personal aspects of my life. But when I was a kid, it was more like you know, like Harry Potter and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, what is it? A series of unfor- a series of unfortunate events. That was a good yeah. one. Uh, huh. So you're a reader. I was a reader. My mom used to be a reader, honestly, and I just got it from her. Yeah. So you're no that that tells you that tells me why you're so darn smart. <laughs> well, that's teachers and uh, Jake. I think that's an opinion that you share alone, but I appreciate nah. it. No, <laughs> for one thing, if you can have the memory to be able to do that, like we say, the spoken word poetry to be able to put it into a tune, you've got a brain. Well, yeah. actually, it actually does take a lot, especially if you have a big catalog. Like when you see uh, us go perform for hours on end and for like, you know what I mean? That takes a lot of work to actually memorize all of those songs. Because you got to think the average songs for three minutes. And it's not like guys have teleprompters going across you know, like in the audience somewhere. It's just off of your memory. You have to remember an hour and a half worth of songs you wrote a year ago, yesterday, perhaps. You know what I mean? And make it actually work that actually is difficult i mean it sounds easy but if everybody could do it then they would you know what okay now bringing this part is you look at the music of let's just say today you know and maybe compared to what you might have liked in the past or whatever is there any do you like the music now or the the past and what would you change if you did, did the past uh, the past, but like not that far in the past. Not like, uh, not like uh, Africa Bombada past, but like maybe like when Young Jeezy was out past, like you sure. know what I mean, like right after Jay Z era, because it was like raw music that was impactful, but at the same time was thought out. Like you know what I mean. I think it wasn't. Like, it was like watching a movie. Like you know what I mean. I like to try to keep that element alive, so I have to also consider that I am an artist from out that's out right now. You know what I mean? So in that in that sense, then yes, right now. But I think it's more artists out right now that are just getting on the mic and just either telling too raw of a truth to where it's just them talking about (laughs) it's them talking about how they went to the mailbox. You know what I mean? And or you know what I mean, shot somebody or didn't like it's just, it's just out, of, just out of crazy, boring, or just too much. Like you know what I mean, or it's just not cinematical enough. Like I want to be entertained when I listen to the song. And I think it's that element is gone. I think it's just like who can just say the most ratchet stuff on camera on on the mic, and it's and it's, it's just tasteless. Like you know, I mean? a lot of tasteless, tacky stuff going on right now. I think these guys are out here desperate for attention. I think honestly that. If it was up to me, I'll put them all on timeout, make them run 15 laps of peace, come back, get a drink, and then run another 100 laps, and then we can start rapping. <laughs> you, know, you, know what I'm saying? you want a story to tell. You don't want just uh, to just to be what you call the ratchet? Yes, literally. I was just like the song I was working on today. I was asking my fiance, hey, hey, is this cohesive enough of a story? Like, it's literally a story. I made it up, right? It's a made up story, first of all, but it's a story. It's a this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and then there's a, a middle, then there's a climax, then there's an end, and then the hook comes back. And then I'm telling another story that's cohesive with the first story you're hearing the sequel and the second verse. Like it's not just a bunch of random. Yeah. 
Jibber, it's not much about no jibber jabber. Like it's just it's an actual. If you're gonna be entertained, you listen to my music, and it's thought out though. But it's thought out with real people that I'm talking about are my real friends from when I was a teenager. I'm telling a made up story that's way overblown and exaggerated with real people in it. You get it? Like it's real, yep. but it's fake. Like you get it? They're just doing a bunch of either fake stuff or stuff that's too real. I don't want to know where the bodies are buried, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just don't want to know. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. This, song, this one's going to be great. You're going to love this one. I yeah, think there's a... But honestly, yeah, the music today, it's like it's like 50-50 because I don't want to discredit the people that, like myself, have taken the time to grow. You got a lot of people, hip hop's age is 50 years old. You got a lot of people that are older now that are just starting their careers as opposed to just teenagers start. I own all my music, I own all the publishing, and I own everything, blah, 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 right? But yeah. back in the day, it wasn't, that wasn't even a possibility. But trade was, it took me long to get my P's and Q's together, being that I'm the one doing it. Like, you know what I mean? I don't have the advantage of the label. So there's a thing that, you know, includes my my bumps and bruises in that but as a hip-hop artist i can get away with that I mean, you know what i mean who cares that's what i'm supposed to have i'm supposed to have bumps and bruises like you know right. what i mean but these guys is out here just saying anything they got i'm saying that that is money just trying to splurge something they don't know how to manage it they don't know what to, i'll walk up on it they'll give me everything for a picture like that that's good and all right jake <laughs> I will give you that story another time about this, but you talked about how it's a story. And I will give you this. It's like, the, we're not, I'm not talking about hip hop, but I'm talking about, I was listening to this one wrestling podcast and they talked about the devil went down to Georgia. You heard of that song before? <laughs> I have not, but. No, it's, it's basically a, uh, it, the devil went down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal, blah, 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 blah. And it's uh, basically. Yeah, yeah, a I've heard, I've heard so, yes. yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fiddle contest. <laughs> And it's basically on the basis of baby face or good guy versus heel bad guy in wrestling. It's like they've got themselves a contest. They've got a reason. They've got this. Got the, you know, and it's oh, and it's like oh, by the way, the bad guy's got the the bad guy's got the advantage, but then the good guy comes back. You know, it's basically a pro wrestling deal. And it's like, and that's basically what good music really is. It's a story. <laughs> yes, I mean, there's got to be some type of cream that's gonna rise to the top. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like there's no other solution. But without the other stuff, there is no top of anything. The cream has to rise to the top of something. You get it? So matter of fact, I'm actually glad that everybody and their mom's trying to rap right now because it gives me the capability to stretch my wings and actually it actually forces me to act because for a long time, I like I was like the number one rapper in Bermuda, especially Somerset, for a long time, just coasting. Like now right. I have to go to the studio. I got the same producer as the city girls. I have to put in that extra work because the competition's high. So that being said, I'm, <clears throat> it pushes me to like, it pushes me, the real artist, the classically trained. I'm the real musician here. It makes me make better music. So like the true fans get an actual better musical experience because yeah. I have to do that. Because the fans started making music themselves, like you know what I mean, and it's like, no, I can't let, like, you can't just let them get away with that, like you know what I mean. Like, I'm gonna show them what the difference is. So that's the that's the upside of it. The downside of it is I got so much more clutter to have that I have to cut through to actually push. Like, I gotta push my way past all these other guys. Like, I gotta knock guys on the face, step all over their heads. You know, what I mean? <laughs> take their chains, put their chains around my neck, take the mic out their hands, and be like, "Yo, like that, it makes it like that." I didn't want to have to do that, my brother. Like I wanted to just rap. Exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. I play football hey. too, damn it. <laughs> like, I mean, hey, Denzel, come in here a second. We gotta get you Denzel here real quick because hopefully he'll come in. It's like hopefully he's hearing, but but until that point, it's like. Well, I guess he's I guess he's a little busy on this second, but he'll get, he'll be in by by the time we're done, he'll be gone. But here he'll be back. But the biggest thing I look at by itself is see, and mind you, you're talking to somebody who's not a like I said, the hip hop guy. I was I see in music growing up, I said this to you when we saw each other last. 
I said, music to me was that noise you heard at halftime of ball games. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's like, but so what is the, the beat? So overall by itself, you pr- do you like producing the music better or do you like um, making it? Or do you like, like, do you like being on stage? I definitely like being on stage better. My dad was like, uh, he used to do shows, make movies. I, like, I'm, I'm an unstaged person. But I've also I, I got to have the stage performance right, which is how I ended up producing so much. But I like being on stage because, you know, it is about that, like, who's going to make it to the stage. Like, that element of it is real. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, like, it's I can sit back and produce, but I can sit back and produce and then get on stage and ain't going to know the difference. Like, you know what I mean? My thing is, I am that guy, Jake. So to sit back and not get on stage is doing myself a disservice because I have definitely like shed blood, sweat, and tears for this. Like you get what I'm saying? Like it's one of those <laughs> things where like people have literally died. One of my co, uh, one of my uh, the co-founders of the company died. I mean, like, it's all type of stuff that's happened. Like, you know what I mean? Bullets flying. Like, it's like, I'm not going to stop just to sit back and produce, but I have the reasons and capabilities and resources to just go be on stage. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is a very beginning. This is the beginning yeah. of something great. You get what I'm saying? Like, 10 years mm-hmm. from now, I'm going to look older. I'm going to be, I'm going to be much more experienced. And it's going to be like, dang. And I remember that interview where he was asking me which one I'd rather it ain't even a question. Like, it's not going to even be a question 10 years from now, my brother. I promise. Like, yes, I produce, but you're also going to know who I am. Like, you get it? Like, I have ran people over for this shit. I mean, I don't want to keep crawling while your podcast rules the rules. Are. Oh, no, no, no. Totally understand. That. But by I the way, ran- I mean, no, no, that's just the big thing. It's like, no, the big thing I have to say with this, though, and I will say, this one, the one of the biggest things, I've been an actor. You've known about this. One of the things is I've got 36 credits, and I don't know what, the reason I ask you is because I don't know what I like acting or like helping produce. Because the last movie I was in, it was the craziest thing. Loved, I mean, as I said, it was, a, it was an unfortunate ending, but I helped get four, um, I helped get four scenes done in one night because I had to get the, I had to get the whole thing going. And okay, it's, like, well, it's, it's about that. Imagine you getting four scenes done, right? And then on the fourth scene, somebody rolls up, another actor from another movie rolls up, talking about, are oh, we shutting the set down, pulling up with guns, talking about, like, that's what the, that's what being on rap is like. So it's like, yeah. I'm trying to rap. Like, I'm not like, it's not like this, this is a very, it's a song about crazy shit with people. I'm sorry, it's a song about, uh, Guys with guns pulling up doing crazy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but while the song about guns, guys with guns pulling up is happening, guys with guns actually pull up, and you got to, you know what I'm saying? They trying to kill you because you're making a song about them. Like, acting, is, I think, is a different world, where it's like, acting, you can just act, and then the next, the most drama it'll be is a civil lawsuit because you parked in someone's parking spot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, with rap like people will actually show up at your studio with guns and actually try to harm you. Like you get what I'm saying? And it's like when you and then when you go to another world, you go to go do a movie or something after that, right? Or you go to go whatever. People that don't understand that look at you like you're crazy because you've evolved from that. And then people that are still there are still trying to like harm you in whatever way possible. But the thing is, you have to balance it all out because you don't want to scare the potential business opportunities away. But at the same time, <laughs> like these guys is really trying to kill you. So it's like, what you want me? Do you want to say, what it is? I, I'm gonna, I'd rather come back next year and try to do business with you again than to die today because I let these guys kill me because I'm trying to impress. You. And that's how rapid yeah. like it's like I gotta be professional, but I also gotta be on my P's and Q's too. I'd say the greatest, I would say the greatest lesson I got. And, and like I said, I'm never going to say I'm a hip hop aficionado or rap hip aficionado. I'd say the greatest, um, the, what was the game? The greatest lesson I got about rap came from a time I met Benzino. 
and his son. <laughs> I, mean, it is, I was basically, I just give this story quite a bit. I was, ben, Benzino's son is uh, Ray Sean, but it was Chavo. Name's Chavo. And um, his hip hop name. And I took him around a little bit because I was a hip hop, I was a, um, not hip hop, I was an Uber driver. <laughs> and, and he was one of my rides that I did for a while. You know what I'm saying? Nicest yeah. kid. Nicest kid you'll meet. I mean, he was, and I'll tell you this, he was good to me. He was good to me, but I also met Benzito a couple, three times, especially when they had a restaurant. They mm. they had a uh, they had a crab they had a crab shack. You know what I mean? So it's like Benzito's crab shack. So it's like used to be. And I learned quite a bit from them about that thing. That's like when you see it. If you if you're not from that world, you don't know how human or not that they are. But you learn just how human they are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 You learn from that world just how human everything is because a lot of it is a lot of it by itself is show, but a lot of it's what they've lived. That's real. Yeah, true. and and it's like, and I miss Chava. I'll admit that I miss Chava and I miss Benzino. It's like I only saw Benzino like two, three times, but maybe four. But it's like they were they really gave. It was a good dang lesson. It was a really good lesson in finding out about you know what hip hop's about. You know, it's because if you've not from that world, you're wondering how phony it is. You really do. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's sometimes it's phony and sometimes it's phony on the other perspective. I was talking about this yesterday. Sometimes it's phony in the sense that it's sugarcoated. You get what I'm saying? Like they make it look nicer than it is. And that's why everybody wants to be. If you knew what you had to do to actually be a rapper, you wouldn't just jump into it. Like if you knew. X amount of construction records fell off of skyscrapers and died. You wouldn't just be jumping in the line to be a, a build skyscrapers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my thing is, is Benzino really who he says he is? Like, you know who his daughter is, right? Right. Right. And then I heard it was some conflict with him and his daughter. And, you know, her songs are selling. But is that they make it sound like it's because of him. But it might be on the contrary. It sounded like he wasn't in her life. He might have been in his son's life more than his in her life. But then her son, his son's career isn't doing as well as his daughter's career. But he was in his son's life. So it's yeah. like the fun stuff. But then here's the other thing. Is she happy? Like there's right. so much fun stuff in hip hop. Her, her brother might be you know what I mean, better off than she is with this whole skyrocketing and coily ray stuff like you know what i mean like it's like benzino's a benzino's been through a lot like he's uh -huh. he's definitely he, he got shot by his nephew at the same time like you know yeah. what i mean yeah i never met him myself though so i mean you can tell me better than i can if he's funny or not but no I mean, no 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 i'm just i was just okay. talking about you learn from the world and he definitely is not you learn from the world just from itself because he's been through a lot you're correct see i've only See, I've only know of Benzino. I know about because I helped with uh, Chavo, and then I've known about his little son. He has a little son also. I've never, I know about his daughter. I've never met her. Okay. Yeah, I've never met her either. She looks like my somebody I know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. I've never met her either. Yeah. But, so, you know. But yeah, it's hip hop is just one of those things where people are allowed to kind of elaborate. I say that so. Somebody is not telling the whole truth of that situation. It's probably, you know, he he has a track record. She's just getting on the scene. She could be embellishing for the sake of popularity. I'm just saying that. Everyone's got a track record. Every, see, everyone's got a story. Everyone has a track record by itself. But think of it in this boat. I always say this. Um, you, get to a, you get to people in prison. They still got kids and they still got a mom. Right. Don't be the guy that gets into a prison killing his mom or his kids. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so, seen guys in jail. I I was in jail. I seen guys under their bunks, under the top bunk, have pictures of like their kids. And I'm sitting yeah. looking at this man. And he he's not it's not even like he's focused on anybody else. He's just looking, he'll post a picture up on the top of his on the top of the bottom bunk. If that makes sense. And like, on the bottom of the top bunk, sorry. And yeah. he'll be looking at him and it's like, bro, like your kids are 
outside somewhere and it's like and he's stuck in there and it's one of those things where everything everybody <clears throat> has a soul and it's we can't we can't neglect the soul that uh that makes people human i mean well, rap- like, uh, like i was whatever. i was saying myself it's like and yeah you're right they have a soul because to tell tell a um, tell one of those prisoners that they killed their mom or they or they killed that that one got in jail for killing their mom or their kids. They're a dead man. They're a dead man walking. <laughs> and am I am I right though? That's what I'm saying. It's like there's because they have kids themselves. I mean, they have kids themselves. But see, they have kids themselves, and it's like you don't want to, you don't want to be that person in itself. But. That's what I think about. It's what you, you learn a lot in it. I'll tell you this. You learn a lot in the city. Because I was a small town guy. I was a small town guy. Just, you know, with basically, um, I would say for myself, just kind of sheltered in my own mind. Because in a small town, you're sheltered. Right. Getting into the big city, you start to, you meet more people. You may understanding. And then getting, become an Uber driver. I had 60 different countries in my car. 60 yeah. different ones. And you meet everybody from the absolute socialists from different countries. You meet the absolute rich CEOs. You meet guys that just gotten out of prison. You you meet the world, and then that's how you grow up. Well, the thing is, like I had that. Like, okay, my my experience with that was like boarding school, and I used to meet people like Ben. I met the Benzinos of the world in uh, boarding school. You know what I mean? Like I had. For example, like the general of the Saudi Arabian army, Louis Louis Goodman's son, uh, son Sammy. Sammy was like my homie, like you know what I mean. Like we used to like mess with the same chicks. Excuse me, mm-hmm. but like I mean, like we were like sort of going. Like that was he used to come to school and like be cool. Like, I was cool with the CEO of Coca Cola's daughter. Like, but also I was cool with people who were like whose parents were like mayors of foreign cities, like the mayor of Toronto. And you know what I mean? It was just, I mean, Rob I did say Ford? That, well, you tell about Rob Ford? Uh, I don't know. I, I could probably, probably. Yeah. <laughs> the way he acted, yes. <laughs> like, I mean, I think it was just an overexposure to the cultures that were different from mine. And mind you, I'm not no lightweight. Like, you know what I mean? I got a lot of pull where I come from. If I wanted to, you know what I mean? So the alternative to just being narrow-minded is to embrace the fact that there are other cultures, like you know what I mean. And but what I will say, what I will say is the hip hop culture and those who have made it what it is have done a good job for themselves. I don't necessarily come from a hip hop culture. I come from more of a regular culture. I come from more of like a, a business conservative Christian culture, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But me as an individual, I'm a rapper, like you know what I mean. I, but I've met a bunch of people that aren't from my culture on my journey, and it's been um, a, a ride. It's been a doozy of a ride. I can tell you that, like you know what I mean. Like, like the hip, like the hip hop world is just different. Like it's like almost no rules, but there's rules. Like you can't go too far, but if you don't go far enough, you ain't made no traction. And it's like you want to make traction in this industry because that's the point. <laughs> you get it, and it's one of those things where you just gotta know. I think it's one of those things you just gotta know when to stop, because otherwise, you can't end up in a, you know, you can't end up falling for your own lies. Like you know, you can't end up trying to live up to some character that ain't real, and then end up in jail. Like, you know what I mean? Doing stuff you didn't, you shouldn't have done. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's possible. Let's hold on one second. Are you here, Denzel? Come on in for a second. Hopefully he's here this time because I wanted to, because he really knows the stuff. Oh, is he? He must be falling asleep. Uh, <laughs> hold on real quick. I'm about to go uh, refill my drink. Oh, no, no, either way. But yeah, absolutely. But you know something? This is the world we, you know, th- this is the world we've had. And it's like, and I can say this, I can say this. It's like the one thing I've learned from it is, and I hope Denzel's hearing this, is that it, by itself, it's like how much do you learn from this industry? You have how much you learn from music, and someone who's not, as someone who's not, I have to listen to someone like Denzel. You know what I'm saying? I have to listen to him because there are things he knows from like 2000 to 2006, 2007, 2010. 
some of the artists, some of the lyrics. He knows all that kind of stuff. So you learn from that. And I was going to say this. Are you there, bud? I'm here. Where is Denzel? Now, I'm going to say this. Some of your lyrics. Now, describe some of your first music and what your lyrics would be. Whoa, I almost forgot. Let me, before we do that, I got an album out right now called Noble. It's been out since May 26, 2023, and it's streaming everywhere. Oh, good. But some of my lyrics, uh, Ranger put me on the spot. I got lyrics, bro. I got lyrics. Let me hit you with something. <laughs> okay, I got a new song that ain't out yet, right? I haven't yeah. even recorded at the studio yet. The lyrics are, I seen it in the wheels. Blanket, right. that's a free shower. <laughs> so you, so you get. Do this come to your head? It does. It comes, do you like? Do you write everything? Do you write everything down? No, I don't write. Her say, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. It's a free shower. Blanket out here trapping. That's re rock. I catch a body like free young. And the police in the wee hours. <laughs> All right, I'll stop there. All right, okay. No, <laughs> Point I, don't want to wait. I don't. I don't blame you because you don't want to waste it all. You don't want to waste right. it all before you get there. You want to get this going. It's like I, get, you, so, I had a I had a buddy of mine who was trying to be a rapper. He ended up being a pro wrestler. And okay. I remember. Uh, but that, sorry to answer your question. I don't write it down until after I record it, and then I'll write okay. it down after I record it, and then go to a professional studio and then re-record it. Yeah. But, and it's like, well, see, I remember. See, I worked in a paint shop with the guy originally. And he was doing, trying to do hip hop at the time, really good at it. And he probably, the guy probably had 70 books of lyrics. He just wrote, just, he just wrote basic lyrics down all the time, what came to his head. He, you know, and I'm uh, saying, he that's good for spoken word. If you want to be a poet, that's excellent. If you want to be a rapper, you got to write. Um, this is Royal Family Source right here. This is, I'm not even feeling like my camera died, so you're gonna have to send me this whole episode. So I yeah, can... yeah, I will. I'll do that. Appreciate it. But okay, that being said, you got to go rap the stuff you want to rap. You can't yeah. write it. Down. You got to write while you're rapping. I when I'm writing, I'll write in the microphone. I'll say like instead of writing put it instead of writing it down on paper, I'll just yeah. say it out loud in the mic, like at home. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll record it at home. I'll wrap it as I'm thinking it and then edit it as I go. And then the thing is, you know, then I'll, I do need to see it when I'm writing and when I'm rapping. So I'll write it down and then I'll take it to uh, the studio and then just re record. But you can't just write stuff down. <laughs> what I'm trying to get to is you can't just write stuff down in a book and expect it to sound great. Because as soon as you make it sound like anything, it's going to sound different, which is a problem when you're writing it down. I mean, you write right. it down the first time in your head, it sounded like something. When you go to re record it, or when I mean, you go to record it, if you never recorded it in the first place, it's going to sound different than how you wrote it down because you can't remember. If you got 70 books of stuff, you're not going to remember what page 57 of book 39 <laughs> was supposed to sound like. You get what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. you got to record it to make it sound good if you want to make it sound good when you re record it. So you, when you're producing, when you're producing, I mean, you're editing it, everything like that. Do you have a specific sound you really like? Do you have to, do you have to go back? Do you have to go back quite a bit? Uh, I got a few different sounds I like. My favorite song would probably be uh, where I'm contrast with the beat. If I'm in contrast, if the beat's like a very like high frequency beat where it's the, the focus of the beat is like a high flute type of like doo -doo 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 type of song that I'm gonna be down here. Da -da 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 -da. If the beat's very da -da -da, very bass focused then I'm gonna be rapping like screaming maybe like you know what I mean to contrast the beat which almost gives kind of a lead vocalist feel to the song. I mean, you also have like I used. I got my second favorite would be like some type of ghostly type of like I'm blending in with the beat type of vocal style, but 
they definitely like to stand on top of the vocals. Oh, I mean, I, I definitely. Let me say that again. I'm editing this. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I, you're good. I definitely, I definitely like my vocals to stand on top of the beat. That's cool. And no, I, I'm learning a lot. I am learning a lot about stuff because places that I, another guy that I know, he's a big guitarist. He's a big guitarist, and he's. He's telling me a bunch of things I would not understand. You know about he talks about how he talks about how this uh, this right here is crunchy, this right here smooth. You know, like this thing in the, with his guitar, and he and I'm like, I like to, and I'm like, I'm trying to understand. But like I said, no, that was that music was that noise you heard at halftime. I was all sports, yeah. so it's like I was all sports. So it's like I'm understanding, but it's like there it is so much more. It is but so much more job. than just the sound. That's our job to make it. Like, you got 30, you got three minutes, bro, because they're worried about the game. You know what I'm saying? They're worried about whatever's happening outside. You got three minutes to make this shit. Sorry. To make yeah. this song. You got three minutes, bro, to make this song hit. You know what I mean? You got to make the, the athletes hyped up. You got to make the people in the crowd want to watch the game more. And you got to make them want to listen to your music, most importantly for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's your job to be able to grasp people from out of their seats and pay attention to you for those three minutes, at least. Like, you know what I mean? And that's the, that's the challenge. How do you get people that are more worried about the game to listen to you for three minutes? Because when halftime comes on, I do want you to actually stay focused. I don't don't get me wrong. I don't want you to just come start looking up my concert tickets and all of that. But at the same time, I want you to soak. I want the energy of my song to overwhelm you so much that the game becomes a movie scene for you. Like the game matters now because of this song playing. Whereas before it was like, you know, we, we, we might win, we might lose. No, we have to win. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, like, that's what the song's supposed to do to you. And you got three minutes to do that to him. And that's your job. Like, the quarterback has his job. The, the point guard has his job. Your job is the person whose job it is to make the music, the battle cry for the, for the halftime uh, slot is to hype people up. Or to make them feel however you want to make them feel as a musician. That's you know, as a musician, we make people feel how we want to make them feel. Okay, I've got a different question. Now, this is a different question about music. We know the whole um, Swifties deal with Taylor Swift. We know this whole situation, how she's got all these fans. All okay. right, this whole situation with Taylor Swift and all this stuff—it reminds me in a way of Michael Jackson of the day. I'm just talking about. You'll see people, and then they faint, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. The minute he turns, the minute he turns his head, like and somebody, ah, you know, all that kind of stuff. She kind of yeah. does that same. She gets that same vibe. What is it with fans? And I asked a buddy of mine today. I asked a buddy of mine today about this, and I wanted to hear from your end. What is it with fans that get that? into the music where you know they fade is there is there a certain thing to them that it's like it's the only way that can get it out i mean was, i mean what is it i think taylor swift michael jackson and the likes speak for those who are crying for that meaning they didn't have a way to express how they felt they didn't even have the words to express it they didn't know what to say, that nobody was listening. But the way that they feel is being expressed by these people and people are listening to them. So if they attach to that, then yes, my feelings are being heard because everything that that person said is how I feel. And if you know that I'm attached to them and they said this, then my feelings are being heard. I mean, I don't know why, but I announced my album date like damn near last year, maybe in January, almost last year, maybe in January. And honestly, she, Taylor Swift dropped like a uh, album or like a uh, single or something with Ice Spice the same night my album came out. I'm like, can you not do that, Taylor Swift? Because <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> she's, she's afraid of, she's afraid of you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I almost appreciate it just as much as I'm mad at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's afraid of you. You're gonna get her. You're gonna take her number one. 
I would never do that. I, I'll be I'll be number two for the rest of my life if I had to. Look, I mean, I'm not. You know what I mean? It's yours, Taylor. But I think she is an impactful artist who's done the work. And I think once you do the work, once you do the work, nobody can take it. There's no, you ain't got to be afraid of me, Taylor Spence. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like you did the work. Like so, I think once you relate to that many people in that many ways, it's impossible to take that from those people. Like you can't take, it's not even more Taylor Swift than her fans. It's about those fans and Taylor Swift. You can't take Taylor Swift from her fans at this point. If, if she died today, you'd have to make a whole hologram and a clone and some AI, some type of, I got a lab, by the way. I'm working on some type of invention to kind of like, which is already out and they got skins for it and they got the device. But I want to combine a two to where you can put someone's consciousness into like a skin AI robot type of thing. We would need that if Taylor Swift died today. You know what I mean? I don't mind announcing on your podcast again. You are the you are the godfather of purple. <laughs> so I'll tell you everything you need to know. Like, you know what I mean? I got a, I got a whole idea. I got a whole lab. I got an invention. And we're gonna need that people like Taylor Smith because we can't just let her die. <laughs> like we're gonna need robots and stuff with her whole mindset in it and her whole <laughs> Well, that see, that's the thing. So you're saying it's an express, and uh, and see, people are gonna laugh at me asking these questions, but I'm basically on a cram jet uh, session, like you're in a test in a last, like a last final or something like that on music, because that's my fault. That's my fault too. I so I'm in a cram session. And I'm just trying to understand because I'm always like when I would see the eek and all that kind of stuff from Michael Jackson and everybody that's gone to an eighty thousand, like you thought of <laughs> Queen, Freddie Mercury and Queen, and they did the same thing to him. And you get all that, like, I try to understand, because, but I try to understand expression, because there's different things um, that I get the expression from on that, that, even if it's a story, if it's something else of entertainment that gets me. But I try to understand, because I don't quite understand the idea of music or where that brought, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think music really lies in the hearts of people who, you know, it's like the same passion as sports, it's just a different way of expressing yourself. Like, you know, I mean, even with Queen, I mean, he was the lead singer of Queen was rejected from a whole other band before he found the guys for Queen. He was like, he had to convince them even to like actually follow him. And then he started making songs like, Mama, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That didn't come until later. Like, you get it? Like, it's one of those things where music requires, mu- being a musician is like being a football player who got hit every time like a quarterback who got sacked every time and you know what i mean you was in high school and then somehow you got drafted to the league and then you know what you was like i'm never getting sacked again in my life that's what that's what being a musician is it's the passion of leading it's mm-hmm. not necessarily like you're not playing the game once you finish singing a song you might go put a helmet on and, and finish playing the game with everybody else but most musicians, most musicians that you know are the quarterbacks of the team as far as mental goes, as far as passion goes, as far as spirit goes. I was a running back myself, but I was also a producer for a long time. Most, but most musicians, like, you know, would like to play quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're the leader. They're the leader. And, no, you know something? You bring up this expression. I got a story I like to tell on this. I've told this to these people also. Denzel exactly knows what I'm talking about here. I mean, he will know by the time I say it. I'm watching a I'm watching a main event of a wrestling show. I'm a, we're all wrestling fans, okay? I'm watching a main event of one of our shows. It's um, Cody Dusty Rhodes' kid. His name is Dusty Rhodes. His kids, Cody. His two of his kids, Cody and Dustin, were facing the bad guys in the main event. Dusty comes on now. Now, mind you, Dusty had had cancer by this point, so he's lost sixty pounds. Whoa. He looks. He's old. He looks very sickly. And, he, you know, the skin's hanging off of him because he used to be a big fat guy, you know? Yeah. And he's getting that thing. So get down to the end of the match. He does his part one more time. His moves, everybody that knew him, all that kind of stuff like that gives them his little signature, whatever, and the place explodes. And there's like 21,000 people there. Place explodes. And they give, and they are chanting his name. And it's like, and it was like, the, and then they get the finished match over, blah, blah, blah. 
the end of the thing. Well, meanwhile, he did one move. The old man did one move, and he was holding his the breath bad. He was so sick because he was so sick. They couldn't hardly ever get in the ring and, t- and all that kind of stuff in it. And that whole thing, that was his final little move that he did. He would die in 2015. I think it was 14 when they did it. And that was the last of his thing. And That's that scary. story gave me the story they put on there because that was real. His cancer was real. The story, of course, was a story. But his cancer was real. But that one final move gave me a is an expression because – we lost we lost our dad in 2010, and he was 82 years old, and he was the old warrior for us. You know what I mean? And all the way to the end, he pushed and pushed and pushed to keep healthy, to keep everything. He's the old warrior with one final swing in him. And that part on that was just the – even though it was a story, it's the old warrior with one last shot. And so I get the idea of what you say with music. There's an expression to it. What do you realize? What is it in you? What do you what do you see? And I saw that with that thing like you see with music. Yeah. I think anybody can attest to this. I think all we can ask for is to inspire the next one. I mean, we only have a, a certain amount of time here, right? I mean, all I can ask for is to inspire the next kid that's like, you know what? I'm stuck in my circumstances, but I see a little light. I see a little light in the window sill that if I follow that light, I might be able to get far away from the stuff that leads me to being depressed, isolated, destitute, and just hungry. And I can go be content at least for the rest of my life. And I think, you know what I mean? That's especially in show business and entertainment. That's all we can ask for is because by the time you know who we are, we have made it away from the circumstances. Trust me, we're good. You get it? But the thing is, all I can ask for now is to inspire the next. And I think, you know, with that, you know, he might have had cancer and all that, but he did his job, you know. He found his one he found it one more time. It's like he did. He found it one more time. And it was like, and it's like <laughs> you're old, you're old, you're beat up. You don't you, I mean you hate being old. But you found that one, and then the pace exploded. It's like it always did when you were 30. You always yeah. did when you were 35. You know what I mean? It's like they did it just well, one I'm more. 30. And I'm, I always I'm look 30. at it as the final old man. Jake, I'm 33. I don't, I don't know what it means to be 35. No, no, no. I don't. Don't get too <laughs> far. I'm trying to make it 35. No, I'm just talking about the old men that have a one final – they have one final in them. You know? It's, uh, and we all <laughs> hope and pray we have one. Go ahead. Can you call the dog? I'm sorry, it's a dog over here. I'm trying to get away from it. Yeah. But my my grandpa died the week I was born, and mm-hmm. people would treat me like that. And it's and I had to tell my mom earlier today, like, hey, I'm not your dad. And I had to realize that this whole time she's probably been psychologically confused between the two because he died the week I was born. And there's a part of that's like, hey, maybe his spirit did try a little bit, a little bit of spiritual transferring happening and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, no, I get it. You're 33. I understand that part. I just understand the expression of what you talked about with music is it can go in any other entertainment. Do you find everybody finds theirs? Yeah. And and, and as an older man, I think I can't wait to be an old man that makes music. Like I, I make music at 33, like humbly. And I kind of, Tiptoe, like, hey, I don't really. I mean, now I get now at thirty three. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of like a sergeant. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I know what I'm talking about. I don't overstep my boundaries, but I know what I'm talking about. But I can't wait to be like that old general that's like making music, that's lived the life, that like you know, may have cancer, but is focused. I, I think me being at my core, me knowing how consistent I've been with certain goals from the time I've been a very little boy to a 33-year-old man, it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure by the time I'm old, I'm telling you now, my goal is going to be to, like, leave a legacy, to inspire the next, to leave a path for those who, who didn't have one before. Obviously, if you have a path, I don't need to create a path for you, but there are a bunch of people who don't have a path to live a life that deserve it. If you don't deserve it, I'm not giving you a thing. <laughs> but those who do deserve it, there's going to be a way. 
and I'm going to make sure of that, even if I have to die trying. You know what I'm saying? And that being said, I'm kind of an old man to some, but what I mean by old is what you're talking about, like 80, 90, 100, 150, whatever. We like Our lifespans will increase as we get, you know, go through time. That's true. Hey, but hey, hold on one second. We've got about three minutes. Are you there, Denzel? Let's see if we got a third time to charm. Let's see if we've got a third time here. Yeah, you are. You, you've avoided us. You avoided us this whole time. Was- Man, <laughs> I, uh, I actually I left the room for a little bit, but um, I'm, I'm back here. He knows his hip hop. Denzel, he is the king of this stuff. He knows it. Okay. This guy, this guy, this guy absolutely knows stuff. What was that? And what was that question you had the other night on Facebook? I was going to see if you could ask Femi. What it was about. What is your favorite like 2000 to 2006? What was that you had on Facebook? Oh, it was the uh, the trend of the era, like you know the the long white tees and the long black tees and the do rags with the Birdman lugs and the the colorful kicks and everything. And um, oh, what else is going on? Like yeah, basically, uh, like basically it was that. Just it's it's different trends at different time periods, you know, like. You go from the uh, the eighties when it was the Kangos and the Adidas and the fat gold ropes, and then you go to the nineties. Pants are a little baggier. You got Timberland boots. You know, like 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 everything. And then you know it goes in the two thousands, and what I'm saying and it leads into you know kind of through the twenty tens and today. Like hip hop's always been trendy, even in the fashion sense. You know what I'm saying? And there are some things that end up making a comeback, and some that just kind of stay gone forever. You know, and they're just memories, just like. I said on, like, LL Cool J, he had FUBU, right? You know, that one point in time in the early 2000s, that was, like, the hottest thing. You know, like, everybody was, like, like rocking FUBU and everything. And Okay, like, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so that's all it was, Jacob. Oh, yeah. No, but I was going to say this. It's like, and now I can be the godfather of purple. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, but we do have to wrap in one minute. No, we got to go. Hey, Femi. Yes. Thank you very much. You, this was an awesome interview. This is an awesome interview. I learned a lot from you today, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Likewise, brother. Likewise. You are. You take care of yourself and keep and keep kicking butt. All right. Will do. Take care, buddy.